ways. Uh, I got lots of responses, and one of the responses, or one of the most popular responses, was how do you put hunter heels on? So I'm going to run through that. The other question was how do you make a nice toe bend? I'm going to run through that. And the other question was how do you uh, forge concave steel? Because in England we all forge concave steel, but outside of England, a lot of people have never used it. So I'm just going to quickly show you how to do that. So I'm going to run you through hunter heels, toe bends, and making concave shoes all in one. It'll kill three birds with one stone effectively. I've just got a piece of concave steel. This is 12 inches of inch by half, which in the rest of the world is 30 centimeters of, uh, I think it's 20 by 12. Yep, 20 by 12. And I put a center dot on it. That's right in the center there. I use these little uh, things there for balancing it. Put your steel on, find the center, lean it over, tap it, you just put a little mark just on the very outside edge there. And by the time you've bent your shoe around and put a toe clip on, you can't see that. So I'll pop that in the fire now for a toe bend. There we go. So bring your steel out of the fire, locate your center dot, which is right there. You want your tongs on, form a nice little 90 degree angle. With your, with your stock there. Onto the bick, round face of your hammer, and you're moving your steel up and down the bick, and then effectively your hammer stays in the same place, and that puts your toe bend in. Always use a round face of your hammer. If you use the uh, flat face, the corners of your hammer will put little dents in the inside of your concave section, which you don't want. So I've got it half bent, it's not quite bent enough there, so I've just flicked it around on the anvil, and I'll do the same on the other side, just so we get a nice balanced toe bend. We'll have a quick look at that. Sight it up on my grid, you can see it's not quite balanced yet. One thing that you should use your anvil for, people forget about, is your anvil's got two perfectly straight sides, and you can use that for balancing your shoe up. You can see how it's balanced up. If you put your ruler on there, move it up, it just makes that toe bend a little bit easier to balance, as you can see. This one's not quite balanced. The distance from there to there is slightly more than the distance from there to there. So I just need to bring that branch round a little bit more. If you get your toe bend right in a shoe, generally the rest of the shoe will uh, be right as well. So it's worth spending a bit of time on your toe bend. Toenails. Uh, this is just a specimen shoe, but if I was making a shoe for a horse, I'd have to see how much pitch to put on the, uh, the nail holes. If it was a big sloping foot, I'd have to put more pitch on. If it's an upright foot, less pitch on, obviously. You make your shoe depending on what the foot is like that you're doing. So we're going for a hunter heel. I'll put it back in the fire in a second, but what we're aiming to get is the, the foot in the centre of the section. Hunter heels are quite a big thing in the UK. So what we're looking for is the point of the heel right in the very centre of the section. So we're going to have to forge the outside edge in and the inside edge of the steel in till the furthest point back of the shoe is right in the very centre. So then you can sit your heel right on the very centre of your shoe. If you've got a long narrow foot, you might need to draw your steel up a little bit. Or if you've got a bigger foot, you obviously start with a wider section and you'll have a rounder sort of heel on it. So I'll pop it back in the fire and then I'll uh, work you through that. So I'm going to put this hunter heel on. Normally, if I was making shoes, um, I'd put a hunter heel on and I'd bend the, uh, the shoe round as well, bend the branch round. So always very important to keep your steel 90 degrees to the anvil. If I lean it that way to forge that, that corner over, the anvil will push. I'm probably going to have to have two heats to put this heel on. But if I lean the shoe over that way, because I'm going to forge that corner in there, the force off the anvil would force that section up there. You see how it's already starting to go a little bit just when I tapped it. It's not perfectly flat anymore. I've lost a bit of my foot bearing surface. It's very important that you don't lose that. So I'm going to have to put it back in the fire anyway to show you. But firstly, uh, shoe on the anvil at 90 degrees, not leaning that way. You can lean it that way slightly, but never have your ground bearing first surface leaning upwards. I'm going to forge that corner off there just to shut the fullering up. Then I'm going to go to the edge of the anvil and knock my frog check off, turn it around, knock the outside edge off, have a look at the heel, see if I've got the point right in the centre, and then I'm going to put some slope on it. I'll just show you this. This is my anvil. It's a JHM anvil. It's a brilliant anvil, but I make a shed load of tools. And when I'm drawing my uh, stamps out, when I get down to the very point of the stamps, I work the stamp there and I forge them down like that and I keep smashing into the anvil. And when you're doing loads and loads of stamps like I do every day, it's inevitable. It's not a fault of the anvil, it's a fault of mine. So on the hunt heel, we've got to nip the section up, just fold that outside edge in. 
So you're getting it the point of the uh, section right into the centre there. That's your frog check. We're trying to force the uh, furthest point back in the shoe into the centre of the section. So we've got the furthest point back there, that's in the centre. Then we put the slope on. So the slope goes from the, v, the foot bearing surface right the way to the ground bearing surface. There's no variation in that, it's just a constant slope all the way down. Turn it over to check that the furthest point back there is in the centre. It's not quite, so I'll forge that. So as you can see, the furthest point back of the shoe there is right in the centre of the section. That's where the heel of the foot will finish. We've got a nice flowing line there, that angle there. It's not a broken line, it doesn't go like that. And then off at an angle, it's a dead straight line from foot bearing to ground bearing surface. So I'll put that back in the fire now, and we'll give that a rasp up. So quite a short heat on this, just gonna give it a quick rasp up. Uh, normally, if I was making these for stock, I'd bend the branch round, uh, bend the other side round, and rasp both heels in one heat. But just to show you how to do it, because we want it to be a nice flowing, flowing heel like that. No sharp corners in it. And the, I'll show you when it's finished, but this ground bearing surface there, the shape of that should correspond to the shape of the shoe on the foot bearing surface. Tied up with the file. So that's a quite nice little hunter heel there on the concave section. The furthest point back in the shoe, right in the centre of the heel, in the centre of the stock. So that's where the foot's going to sit. That outside edge there, it flows round, and that corresponds nicely with the ground bearing surface there that flows round. It's a continuous line now, it's not a rounded line like that, or it's not a slope, and then it goes to 90 degrees. It's a continuous from ground bearing surface to foot bearing surface. So next heat, we forge it round the bick. With this concave, uh, in England we use it all the time, or in the UK we use it all the time, but outside of uh, England, Europe, uh, outside of the UK, uh, guys don't know how to use it, it's very delicate. This inside edge there, the concave, it's so thin and so slight. When you're bending your shoe around the bick, if at any point you trap your, your steel between the hammer and the bick, you end up denting it there, so your shoe go flows around that has loads of little dents in there. So when you're forging your shoe around the bick, the uh, hammer should always be the other side of the bick. So to bend the branch around, hit it that side of the bick, and to open it out, hit it that side. But never, never ever trapping it between the anvil and the bick, because you don't want to damage this inside edge of the section. So I'll get a little heat on it, and I'll show you how to forge your branch around. So we'll give this branch a little bend. You don't have to have too much heat to bend a branch on a concave shoe. So hold it, your toenails there. The angle of your tongs wants to be roughly 90 degrees. Keep your hand up above where you're forging it. There's a lot of guys forge branches like that and they have the hand down beneath the uh, branch, but when they're forging it, the scale falls down and gets onto the hand. So as you can see, I'm never at any point trapping the steel between the hammer and the bit. I'm always hitting the other side of the bit. So keep, every time I level it, I'll just check it out and check it out my grid at the moment. For a hunter shoe, they want to be a little bit more around there. So I'm going to open it out a little bit there and just bring the whole branch around, make it flow around a little bit better. That should do it. So heel nail. Heel nail's halfway between the, uh, the toe nail there and the heel there. Halfway between that point there. That's roughly where your heel nail wants to be. Middle nail, obviously right in the centre between your toe and heel. Slightly more pitch on the toenail than your heel nail. You're making shoes for feet, so obviously the hoof capsule slopes more at the, the toe than it does at the heel in general. Let's have a little look at that. Quite a nice little hunter shoe there, it nicely flows round. Um, we'll just quickly do the other side. On this inside branch I'll do exactly the same, but I'll do it in one go. When I'm making these shoes at home, 
I'll get a three quarter heat on the shoe, which is the heat from there that goes all the way around to there. I'll bring out the fire, bend the toe, forge the hunter heel on, bend the branch round and then nail hole it in one heat. And the second heat will be inside heel and branch in one heat, uh, bend it round and nail hole it. So it's a two heat shoe and then a third heat to clip it really. So on this inside branch, I'll just put the heel on and forge it round the bick in one heat. So a nice fast heel on this one. So I'll start by just folding the section up slightly more than I did on the uh, on the outside heel there. It's an inside heel, obviously, so you're safe just fractionally further up. That's the frog check on. This is the outside edge on, forging the steel into the centre of the section. Slope it down, turn it over, not quite in the centre of the section, so I'll sort that out. A little bit more frog check, a little bit more outside edge. Right in the centre of the section, nicely closed up, round the bit. Being careful not to uh, trap the steel between the hammer and the bick at any point. So I don't want to squash the section or have any dents in there. I want my shoe to flow around nicely. As I'm leveling it, I'm just checking it for balance. That inside branch is still too far out and too straight in that last section there. Nail holes, toenails already stamped. Heel nail halfway between the toenail and the point of the heel. Middle nail obviously in the middle. Quite because generally on the inside in particular the heel nail will be the foot will be slightly more upright. So you don't want to risk pricking the horse. A bit more pitch on the middle nail and even more again on the toenail to correspond to the hoof. So just rest that inside heel on and that'll be my uh, hunter front out of concave done. So that's it, that's my hunter front done. When I make these at home or make them for stock and for horses, uh, that's a two heat shoe. My third heat would be putting a clip on. But I've just broken it down into stages just to show you guys how I do it. But that's concave hunter front, sloping heels. Just nice, quick, easy shoe to do. You've just got to be delicate with your section.